the George gauge. Here it is, comes in a box. You see this one's been opened before. Open it up, and here's the handle, the important bit. Take that to one side. Here it is. So, what have we got? This, this way round. This piece, looking at it, fits on lower in sizes. So you want to line it up so it's not off to one strange angle. It's got to be in line. Line with the actual facial midline rather than the actual dental midline. So if they do have coincidental, non-coincidental uh, dental midline and facial midline, don't worry. But we're going with the facial midline because we've got to think about the way the body of the jaw is moving. Line it up on the lower incisors. And if you undo the bottom one, this will slide. So if they have imbricated lowers, incisors, doesn't matter, you just adjust it. So that's part one. Great, put it down now. Select your bike fork. So you have to come with a, a range, but you see this is originally designed for children. So what we're gonna do is use probably the white bite fork, sometimes the, the gray bite fork. They vary in thickness. So if I pull the gray one out, what I mean by thickness, move that to one side. So you have a look. So what do we got? Put them two together, combined. There, okay. So if you have a look now, you can see that the white one where the incisors, the upper incisors come round, and they bite. That brings me on to another topic, but where the upper incisors bite, and the actual fork, right in the very middle of it, of the picture, you know, it's a little bit thicker. So we're looking at the dimension here, between the tips of my incisors, between the tips of my fingers, and that's five millimeter bite fork, the white one. And I think it is even marked, just about make it out, five millimeters. And the gray one is marked two millimeters. So you can just about make that out in the light. Okay, so that's two millimeters. Into incisal opening. Okay. Body of the jaw moving forwards, okay? You see there's a, a line on the bite fork. Just about make it out there. Can you see the line there? It splits it if I move it around and get the angle. And that helps you to line up with the dental midline if they have coincidental facial and dental midlines. So there's another couple of things to note. If this block here this block between my fingers, not this one, this one. If this block is too big, yeah, this one here I'm talking about, I shall freeze frame on it. Highlight it. If that block is too big. When I mean too big, it means that the incisors can't actually get right down. If you look there, I'll bring that in. So there's a space between the tip of the incisors and the bite fork because this piece here is hitting on the, on the cingulum of these teeth, on the palatal aspect. So what we need to do is remove some of the material from this, this lumpy piece here, okay? When you've removed it, then you can definitely get the tips of the incisors all the way to the, to the bite fork. Now, another big tip, a common failing that I used to see in the lab was that, well, probably the first one would be insufficient mousse. Uh, 
polyvinyl siloxone, a super fast set or a very fast set material, insufficient mix uh, moves actually on the fork itself. So you, so in the lab, they've got absolutely no idea where these things meet. You know, try to actually align the two models and get the bite. And it's, it's guesswork. You don't want to give the tech any guesswork. You want to, to give them as much information as you can and be as prescriptive in your 3D prescription as you can. Next one would be that they've, the patient has actually distorted, as they've bitten together, got the bite fork in roughly the right place, they've bitten it together, and as they've done so, the fork has bent. Now that's fine whilst it's in the patient's mouth, but as soon as you take it out of their mouth, of course, elastic recovery goes back to where it was. Now that's introduced some flex in the fork, and again, when you put the two models together in the lab, and then mount the models on the articulator, try to get the protrusive bite, you know, it's all, it throws in the skew. And you're sort of guessing where it is. Now, okay, you can, the tech can see that the fork is, there's something wrong, and they can probably force it together. But again, it's, it's just guesswork. You, know, you don't need to introduce this guesswork. So get your patient to tap lightly, yeah, tap gently, and then just hold it in the right position. You don't need to clench on it and bite it. It's not a, a strongman competition. Okay, so you, you bring them forward and get them to just bite on it, just gently. Okay, so let's move on to how this actual... So do not send this piece to the dental lab. So the bite fork, so we've fixed it to the lower incisors. We've got it this way up. We put it on the lower incisors. We've got that right. Then loosen this top one. See it's a, so you loosen it and you can see the gradations there. Not particularly anything to worry about at the moment. What would, I'll come to that in a minute. So line it up, loosely tighten it and put that in your patient's mouth. Aligned with hopefully coincidental uh, dental inside and the facial midline, put it in and get them to practice protruding. So putting it all on, to, on the model together. What I mean by that is you actually ask them to, to slide backwards and forwards yeah, with their lower jaw and just slide. Yeah, there's no great tension to clench down it. Brrr, I'm not trying to do that. It just no moose on it. This is just as you see it right now, and they're they're playing with it. Get them to play with it, relax with it, and just move it backwards and forwards, and actually get the feel of it. Now this gives you, while they're doing that, some indication. If you look down on the top here, at this scale, it gives you some indication of the range of movement. So you can see this would be absolutely unique to the individual. So where they start off may be in so their normal rest position. Let's just say happily it's at zero. As they protrude, if you see, if I go back, do repeat that. Look at this scale. Yeah, we're saying it's on zero. So what I'm talking about is right there. The white piece is actually on the marker of zero. As they protrude, very slowly, the five millimeters of protrusion, they keep going. And their jaw comes all the way out, and we have 10 millimeters of protrusion. You'd be amazed quite how much that people can actually protrude. But first of all, they may be unfamiliar with it, with the actual process. You know, put your hands on their face and actually get them to move backwards and forwards. And they might want to put their hands on your face and to actually get them to understand what you mean by protruding their jaw. People don't necessarily understand that. People don't go around normally sticking their jaws out. Okay, so we've got, starts off at zero, happily, in this case, just for the example, and we can see that they come a maximum, or well, the minimum we'd need would be five mil. Well, let's just say they go 10 millimeters of protrusion. That's what they can give us. So let's just take that 
and you'd lock it. I'm just about to drop it all on the floor. But you'd lock it. They can go 10 millimeters. That's their maximum protrusion. They started at zero and they go all the way out to 10 millimeters of protrusion. So that gives us our 10 millimeters range of movement. We don't want to send the patient away with a device at maximum protrusion. So we're going to just pick a variable really, a starting position. And there's a whole, whole debate about what is the right starting position, which is balance of acceptance, comfort, ability to tolerate it, uh, a desire to achieve an overnight success. There are many things to it, but and then also the range of motion of the device. So let's just say for argument's sake, we have a 10 millimeters range of motion uh, maximum protrusion, and we're going to go for seven millimeters. Can you see? I've just closed it down. We started at the zero. They protruded all the way out to ten. That's their range of movement from zero all the way out. They gave you ten millimeters of protrusion, and we're going to set the bite fault outside their mouth at seven millimeters. I then tighten the hook, tighten the hook, the hook, tighten the screw. Okay, this is it. I've now got this set. This is going to give me 70% of the patient's maximum protrusion. Seven millimeters, that's their 10 millimeter range of, motion, range of motion. Okay, so then I put this, as you see it right now, back into the patient's mouth, line it up, make sure it's not wonky. Remember that we want to go with the actual movement of the jaw. Don't be don't be fooled, you want to see where the movement of the jaw is. So if they have non-coincidental dental and facial midline, it doesn't matter. I want to see where the motion of the jaw is. And you can see that they are set at seven millimeters. So you could get them to just tap, just tap back some forwards, tap that, and not clench so they distort the fork. And then in that position, get them just to hold it. No, no great desperate dan on it just to hold it, and then you get your mousse, and you would liberally you know, squirt your super fast set mousse into all these gaps over the occlusal surface, you know, fill it up, start at the back, bring it forward, you know, and then this, this will go off in no time. And then when you've finished, and the, the material's set, just keep some on your glove perhaps, and it's get a bit tacky, you know it's gone, put the heat on it, yeah, it's definitely set. Okay, so this doesn't take long at all. You can get them to open, open it up, take it out, take it out. You do not then send that whole thing to the lab because if you send that away, well, you haven't got your handle for the next patient. You keep hold of this piece. You cold sterilize it, keep it nice and clean, of course, but then it's ready for the next patient. You get your next bite fork out of the box, and do that, and off you go again. And that wraps up the non-clinical how to use the George gauge. I'm Adrian Zacker, and you've been watching Snora.Training. Check it out, lots of on-demand dental sleep medicine education for you.